I'm going to be talking about very well-known molecular genetic phenomena. I will approach these uh, from my standpoint as a geneticist, evolutionary geneticist. <laughs> So I would like to pass on to the conclusion section of my report. From such a genetic point of view, the phenotypes that can emerge for genetic and epigenetic alleles can result in a phenotype that is registrable in terms of structural and uh, functional uh, capacities characteristics. The, the polymorphous locus contains methylated and non-methylated cytosine. And the state, epiallelic um, state, is a genetic um, trigger for the functional um, state, or TFBS. It may not be bound to a particular site. It may not bind to a particular site. And in this case, transcription may begin. Um, a lot of things depend um, on the environmental factors. The allele state may be genetically regulated, regulatable. The understanding of these mechanisms uh, may result in new breakthroughs in uh, tumor therapy. The state may um, be lost if cytosine uh, moves to lysine. So, and if And this may be useful in terms of uh, phylogenesis. These mechanisms are derived from the usual phenotype the slides are not moving, but let us move on to the next point. Let me just mention that EP allele may manifest as a modification and may be present on the behavioral level. The frequency of EP alleles may vary. We know that genetic mutations occur at different frequency. We know the mechanisms uh, that are involved in them. And it, is, it can be expected that the mutations will become more frequent. More frequent than epigenetic mutations may be higher than genetic mutations. And this means that such mutations will determine ontogenesis in normal and abnormal environments.
which may result, which may translate into phylogenesis um, to a larger extent compared to genetic mutations. Citizen is modified, and if uh, and if it is um, evolutionary beneficial. The mutation may be reinforced. If we obtain experimental confirmation to this hypothesis, we can use that to inform diagnosis, to inform treatment, and to inform prevention of different genet genetic diseases. I think it's a very important outcome of my research. And the next slide. Epigenetic factors of uh, um, inheritance is um, um, a superstructure of a, uh, a nucleotide sequence in the zygota. We have identified new variants of uh, histone proteins uh, and chromat another epigenetic factor includes uh, chromatin remodeling. The nucleotide sequence means that after modification, the structure is different, and histones can form, transcripts can form of a particular tissue. Depending on what citizens are methylated. This works on the RNA level as well, which may result in a greater lifespan. The modification may be based on the epigenetic um, marking, which in turn results in new functions. For RNA, uh, this can be identified as an EP transcriptome. In essence, this is an epic proteome, a superstructure on a basic organ. Next slide, please. We we'll largely work with genetic mutations. We know them really well. They're well studied. Um, the genetic um, factors for um, the genetic contribution um, for um, complex um, characteristics on the part of all lo uh, loci generally does not exceed 10%. The contribution of every single locus is generally lower than 1%. Should it decrease the number of subjects, this may result in greater statistic power, but is not going to have any impact on the level of epigenetic control on the inheritance uh, frequency. So the genetic contribution, the genetic input, is really small for um, complex characteristics.
in the past few years, we're able, we have been able to um, identify um, the sequence of nucleotides and the epigenetic input um, of metalloma. It turns out that the epigenetic input identifiable um, by cytosines is either higher or equal. Smoking, as far as smoking is concerned, the genetic and epigenetic inputs are 20 to 1. So being a smoker being, oh, versus being a non-smoker and even the age at the smoking table is a better predictor because better predictor for uh, tumor origins. So the DNA may be able to detect See, um, so this characteristic is uh, better detectable with um, epigenetic rather than genetic markers. And the same goes for alcohol use. So in this country, of course, there are heavy drinkers who down a bottle of alcohol a day. So uh, methylation is uh, the input of methylation is 19 to 1. And the most obvious case when epigenetically, uh, epigenetic factors are more important to, uh, predictors than genetic is the um, age at which certain sites are expressed from puberty to 70. And this gives rise to a number of ethical concerns. Um, and this is something that might be interested, uh, interesting for um, insurance companies. Keep the previous slide on, please. Going to go back to the previous slide. The previous one. And the one before that. Thank you. Because complex characteristics are more uh, better defined by epigenetic um, characteristics. It is clear that the input to cancer of epigenetic markers is probably going to be much more significant in terms of character and in terms of progression. If you look at the distribution, of genetic versus epigenetic factors in twins, the, uh, let us take a look at autism, for example. So in 10% of the, uh, so um, autism in uh, twins is only 10% uh, um, environment, it's 90% hereditary. So the environment uh, can provide different inputs, variable inputs. But on the whole, The uh, 
blue area on the graph is epigenetics. And this field is far more important in terms of predicting uh, the predicting health, predicting body functions. Right now, we are uh, working with a very small locus that um, only um, makes sense for those who um, want to defend their PhD thesis or doctorates. Uh, this pair, uh, methyl cytosine or cytosine in this point of genome, are epi allos. Even though they correlate with one nucleotide within a genome. Same locus, two different states. In terms of mechanism, it's, it's not the same um, process. Um, that is involved in the realization of genetic information. So a lot depends on the state of the organism. You determine the functionality. Of the genome or transcription of the area from a certain point. And this transcription can be either switched off or switched on. The methyl group can be is attached to the citizen nucleus, and the methylated citizens are indicated in yellow. And this is where transcription begins. Generally, the areas that regulate gene transcription are represented by CPG islands or CPG cells, sites. Separate sites may uh, work as um, blockers or suppressors of transcription. Typically, um, sites are five, less, uh, five times less numerous um, than the um, expected level for mammals. So we're dealing with negative selection. Nature seems to be quite tolerant to these changes. We're talking about negative selection. Quite probably, because transcription is not ex uh, excluded, certain sites may enable constitutive transcription from a particular genome area. Next slide, please. Let me point out again that nucleotide mod modification may result in a new function of, a, of the area. And this applies to DNA, it applies to RNA. Up to a single nucleotide. Histones that are modified. Change their function with regard to carrying epigenetic information. The sequence of nucleotides in the zygota acquires certain functions after uh, modifications at uh, each of the levels. 
these monomers um, result in functional and me- have a functional and medical significance at every level. The epialo can be realized through the tra- transcription factor or TF. There are many factors, but this one may regulate a small number of genes, four, for example. Or it can regulate several thousand genes. This binding factor. This binding site may bind to many factors and may have different affinity and they compete with each other. Identifying factors that um, work together on a particular site that regulate one and the same gene is one of the fundamental problems in biology that needs investigation because we need to be very specific about the um, factors that determine uh, the selection of one of the competing factors. The factors may overlap. Uh, they may be adjacent. And apart from methylation, they may be linked. You can see that the letters um, are of different height. And it shows the height indicates how frequently um, these. Um, factors can be presented in a particular position. These transcription factors may interact with transcription factors at different points. The binding sites include uh, 7 to 15 nucleotide pairs. Uh, TFBS um, is located in Sibitri Islands uh, that are 50 to 200 and more pairs of nucleotide long. There may be more than one cytosine to activate a transcription factor. So a combination of uh, methylated states of two or more citizens contained in one and the same molecule, DNA molecule, defines the possibility and extent of transcription in a particular site of a genome. Human genes. Um, or to keep silent, this is their job. So in, uh, in uh, most of the cases, they don't work um, within a given tissue. As Andrei Petrovich um, suggested, genes are transcribed in um, tumor tissues. This hypothesis was quite surprising, and it seemed absurd at the time. But now it looks that some genes um, really exist. I'm not going to focus on the slide in detail, but plant models, not human models, show that complex characteristics such as the shape or the um, blooming time is determined by just three loci. (laughs) 
even so the genes that regulate, um, say, root length or the time of blooming uh, can be can number thousands or hundreds of thousands. In bioinformatics, there was a theoretical study about why you need such a large number of genes. If you suggest that the input of every particular gene is low, nearing on zero, it turns out that it is the genetic aspect that is responsible for the manifestation of a particular characteristic. However, however, uh, if However, one other concept um, is that this characteristic um, is the sum of um, expression of thousands and thousands of uh, different sites of different areas that um, is very weak. It turns out that it might be one and the same system of regulating, regulated, regulatable genes. The input for most of, um, of them is uh, almost undetectable. The way the system works with these is um, a single loci when changed is not enough to result in a characteristic. And these regulators are epigenetic. So this is one of uh, this is a situation that we know precious little about. So uh, the um, methylation units can be can vary you can see that uh, there are uh, three loci the red and yellow lines uh, reflect a strong weak methylation. One of the same areas of a genome can be uh, can have either small or large expression, and if the same works for humans, it will be an important discovery for medical genetics and for um, our understanding of uh, cancer progression. The temporary um, epileptic state depends on the phase of ontogenesis or the environment in animals and humans. An animal may be present on one and the same DNA molecule in two states. And the state depends on the epigenesis phase in animals as well as humans. The slide shows that after C2 gametes meet, uh, remethylation is um, rapid remethylation occurs. Some epi allyls are under methylated. And this shows uh, 
This slide shows uh, the development of uh, mice. These alleles, where these alleles as the specific allele does not disappear, but it can be lost to observation or reoccur. And if this process breaks down on the methylation stage as a result of um, epigenetic factors such as smoking or alcohol, this may result in remethylation and demethylation. We know that epi allyls can be regulatable in um, normal or abnormal conditions, such as tumors. We need to know which epi allyl to, which epi allylic factor to impact on. The epigenome is also different. And this is the future that The future of um, oncology. And the next slide. Let us move on. And, th and the next one. The differentiation of tissues in ontogenesis is genetically partly um, a result of regulated uh, change of the epiallelic state of the nucleotide in the given genome position. The abnormal change of the epiallelic state within TFBS may be one of the reasons for neoplastic process or tumor projection, uh, progression. The emergence of epilogues uh, in the new genomic positions. It's to do with phylogenesis. However, at present, We are not very adept at analyzing the epigenetic state of DNA. Everything uh, is based on the genetic input. But uh, in many cases, um, the environmental factors are much more influential. I've seen a number of pictures. There is a sequence, there is a tumor tissue, and there are several sites, but um, only a few of them are methylated. The rest of them, which are also present, are not recognized as methylatable. It is a tumor, but it's a regular pattern. It's a regular process as well. The cell knows uh, which um, uh, sites to methylate. We don't, but we see that this is a, rep a replicable uh, phenomenon, and it is to do with the tumor development. Before each differentiation, um, um, stage, the four-letter genotype is converted into a five-letter uh, genotype, epigenotype. It doesn't use the methylated state. 
uh, it doesn't uh, impact the binding complementarity. But it takes the four-letter alphabet to the next level, to the five-letter level. There are just a few comments left. This is my last section. Uh, the transgeneration inheritance of the epialles in animals and humans. More likely, most likely, RNA regulatory mechanisms are at play here because the cell sees which site to methylate and which not to. The state is inherited by different generations because um, our hearts, our blood, um, our kidneys are more or less similar to each other. Look at these mice. They're identical. But one of the mice shows this type of broken tail. Uh, this is an epigenetic event. It's an LL-specific phenotype. These are some other examples of transgeneration epigenetic, epigenetic inheritance, transgenerational inheritance. The effect of chemotherapy on mice. Look at this tumor, tumor, tumor. So these are the defects that can be manifested across many generations. These tests are quite um, um, uncommon because too expensive. This slide comes from the book uh, The Logic of Accident by Kunin. 10 to the power of minus 7, 10 to the power of minus 9. Um, the uh, mistakes, errors at every uh, level of um, information expression will not be identified by studying the preliminary level, but may impact the eventual phenotype of an organ, tissue, or the whole organism. Whatever we sequence, we don't know what errors are going to occur and how they're going to impact our health, but errors are much more frequent than we can believe. And we're moving on to my last slide, epigenetic mutations and their frequency uh, is not determined. We know that um, this phenomenon exists, but how frequent it is, we cannot say. It may be suggested that um, the frequency is uh, 10 to the power of minus 7 to 10 to the power of minus 9 for DNA. Um, there is some space between them. So epigenetic mutations may be observable um, much more commonly compared to usual mutations. The input of these mutations um, may be quite big, and it is sometimes is big, or sometimes uh, it can be higher than the frequency of uh, traditional genetic mutations. And my conclusions, I'm not going to read that. Can we move to the next slide, please? All levels of genetic information are characterized uh, by a higher degree of errors compared to replication. These mutations may also become 
uh, may also be more common compared epigenetic mutations may also be more common than genetic mutations. And um, they will determine the cancer generation process. Uh, Epimutations in the generative tissue may foster phylogenesis um, more effectively compared to genetic mutations. This new fundamental knowledge may break new ground in diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of cancers, as well as in medicine on the whole. Thank you very much.